This is Kerry Baptist College's admission for ball on a membrane, IYPT 2021. The ball in the membrane question is, when dropping a metal ball on a rubber membrane stretched over a plastic cup, a sound can be heard. Explain the origin of the sound and explore how its characteristics rely on relevant parameters. This is the exemplary video. This is the overall experimental design. This is the ball with the purple balloon, which served as a rubber membrane stretched over the top. This here is the retort stand, which was used to hold the ruler. And this was the ruler to control the height at which the balls were dropped for all of the experiments. We used an open source audio software called Audacity which allowed us to record and analyze audio data. <clears throat> this audio data was recorded and then using the function plot spectrum, we were able to get graphs, which we could then use a cursor to control a red line to extract values from for the volume and frequency <clears throat> of a specific noise sample. The theory of bowl on a membrane is what is a sound, characteristics of the sound, and how the system actually works. What is a sound? A sound is a result of contact between two objects. The specific type of sound is an impact sound in the bowl on a membrane experiment, which actually originates from the collision of two or more objects. In the case of the bowl on a membrane investigation, this is simply two objects. Air pressure waves are created from the object collisions and these collisions essentially cause vibrations. The two objects fall into two groups, exciters and resonators. Simply an exciter provides the energy for the resonator to vibrate and the resonator's vibrations are what cause the sound to be heard. And in the case of the ball on a membrane, the exciter is the metal ball that is dropped and the resonator is the plastic or rubber membrane that is used to absorb the some of the energy from the metal ball. Sound characteristics. There are a few characteristics of sound, um, specifically for the bounces of the experiment, and these are the volume, frequency, and the length of time. Now, the volume is the loudness or amplitude of the sound and is measured in decibels. The frequency is measured in hertz and is the pitch of the sound. And this can exist as fundamental and harmonic forms, but only the fundamental form was actually <clears throat> measured and recorded within this experiment. And the length of time, this is the time taken between each sound being produced. Uh, the frequency can be seen here, and it is the total oscillations of the sound wave over the period of one second, assuming that the blue arrow up here represents one second. And the amplitude is <clears throat> the uh, essentially vertical height of the sound wave. How the system actually works. Essentially, the ball possesses the greatest potential energy when it is held above the membrane at its peak height. At this point, the only force that's actually acting on the ball is gravitational forces attracting it downwards. Gravity attracts the ball downwards, and so the ball falls towards the membrane, gaining kinetic energy and losing potential energy as it is converted. The moment upon collision sees a small normal force resisting the ball's motion. Um, this can simply be stated because the ball doesn't fall through the membrane, but simply rests on it at this point. The ball, still having kinetic energy, continues on its original trajectory and continues to collide with the rubber membrane and forces the rubber membrane itself to become stretched and to bend from its original state, which can be seen in the diagram to the left. This stretch reaches a critical point in which most energy is elastic. This elastic energy is then um, used as a form of potential energy to then 
cause kinetic energy of the membrane and the ball. And this forces the ball up. And this is because the membrane is forced up itself. And it is due to this movement of membrane that differences in air pressure are created, which is the sound that can be heard. As a result, changes to the total energy of the system is going to theoretically change the characteristics of the sound. With this in mind, all of the variables used in this experiment were to change the energy of the system, be it the total energy available to the system or the energy efficiency of the system. And these very independent variables included the height of the ball drop, the actual tension of the membrane itself, and the mass of the dropped ball. The varied heights will cause a variation in the total energy under the system. <clears throat> Equation of the potential energy is equivalent to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and the height. This is expected to influence many factors of the noise, including increasing the time between the bounces, increasing the volume of the bounce noises and decreasing the fundamental frequency of the bounce or when height or when the height of the ball um, release is increased. And this was conducted using the ruler as seen in the experimental design to control the height at which the ball was released so that this was no source of error. As can be seen here, 60% of the trend lines show that the fundamental frequency did decrease. And what can be seen here is that the greater the height that the ball was dropped at, the actual greater the <clears throat> frequency, the membrane released as a noise. And here, the volume of the bouncing can be seen. And again, the higher the volume was correlated to the greater the <clears throat> height that the ball was actually released from. The varied membrane tensions experiment. This experiment involved varying the levels to which a rubber membrane was stretched. This was done from least to most stretch to negate any hysteresis risk. A greater tension is hypothesized to cause a greater bounce in height as well as a shorter wavelength, which correlates to a larger frequency due to a more efficient system. Equidistant markings were used on a plastic container to vary the tension of the membrane by equal proportions as to control the magnitude of the stretch of the membrane. And so this wasn't a source of error in the experiment. As can be seen here, the greater the tensity of the membrane, <clears throat> the greater the frequency noise released at all stages. And it should be mentioned this time that the different tensions don't seem to um, cause <clears throat> any difference in a drop off in the frequency as they seem to become relatively stable in most cases. The volume is actually a log logarithmic measurement. And so this graph is still substantial uh, in terms of the differences between each series, simply because of that, um, even though it is compacted. And again, it does show that the greater the intensity on average, the <clears throat> greater the volume that is produced due to the energy efficient system. Using the equation that the energy, potential energy, is equivalent to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and height. Increasing the mass changes the overall energy in the system. This pr is predicted to have an impact on the characteristics of the noise as more energy is available in the system that can be converted to noise. Masses were varied by using different sized metal balls of the same density. The masses of the balls used were 8.3 grams, 16.4 grams and 28 grams. And as the mass increases, it was expected that the volume would increase whilst the frequency did decrease. The number of bounce noises is actually seen to have quite a large outlier with the 8.3 ball. 
But using the other two, the greater the mass, the greater the frequency noise was produced from the membrane. The number of bounce noises <clears throat> was also seen, and this was this is the one with the trend line, and it again shows that the frequency does decline over time, and that the greater the mass of the ball, the greater, on average, the uh, frequency of the noise as well. This is the volume, and this is quite easily representative that the greater the mass of the ball, the greater the volume of the noise. In conclusion, the difference height experiment demonstrated that as height increases, the frequency of the bounce noise tended to increase. Uh, the different tensions experiment demonstrated that as membrane tension increases, the volume increases as well as the fundamental frequency. The different masses experiment demonstrated that as mass increases, the volume of each bounce increased as well as the fundamental frequency of each bounce. And it should be mentioned that the increased time actually saw more bounces occur and each bounce was found to have a lesser volume and frequency than the previous. And all of these factors have been influencing the sound by varying the energy of the system in some way, be it the energy efficiency or the total energy available in the system. These are the references of the investigation. Thank you for listening.